How Egyptian are we? Do we have any Egyptian in us? I'm not talking about the nationality. That's awesome. Egyptian nationality, that'd be great if you have some Egyptian in you. What I'm talking about is the, uh, the spirituality of the Egyptians um, back in the day, the time of, of Moses, the time of the Israelites. I heard the expression, and I think it's true, is that the Exodus is not so much a story of Israel getting out of Egypt, but God trying to get Egypt out of Israel. That was the purpose of the commandments, that was the purpose of everything that would happen after the Exodus, the different laws that God gave to them. Because 400 years living in, with the Egyptians will cause you to, be, to dress like the Egyptians, look, look like them, walk li- like the Egyptians. Okay, I was seeing if that's going to get a reaction. I know, sorry, I, I had to. It's an old song, anyway. Um, but they're pagan beliefs, right? And, and, and their beliefs in, in all different like um, things are not of God. And so 400 years of living in that culture will influence you. So it took a long while for God to get Egypt out of the Israelites. We know that um, every family has rules, right? You have rules in your family. We had rules in my family growing up. I still have rules in the family when I go back to see mom and dad and, and the sisters. But, you know, one of the rules is, you know, to respect each other, to love God. Uh, there, there's, there's certain rules in the house. You know, if, you, if you're having good family life, you have rules. It's not because you don't love your kids, you don't love others. You know, you have rules with your spouse. You're like, okay, you can't be going out with another man, another woman, you know, I'm, I'm your spouse. You know, that's a rule, that's an understanding. That doesn't mean they don't love each other. It's because they do love each other. And that frees them up. Same with these commandments from God. Sometimes we get caught up that we think that God or the church is all about rules and stuff like that. But the reason why God and the church has rules is to free us from the sins and the attachments of this world. We all have those attachments, every one of us, myself included. We all tend towards certain things that become rivals to God in our hearts and our soul. So... Uh, I thought it'd be a good opportunity during Lent to go through a little examination of conscience, especially in relation to a lot of these uh, uh, commandments. And I'm going to get specific at times here. When I get specific, it does, I'm, I'm not trying to beat people over, over the head or make you feel guilty, but I, it's good for us to be specific because know that God loves us, and if we made a mistake or a sin in certain areas we didn't know, all we have to do is turn back to him. Repent of it, own up to it, but turn to him. Okay, first one. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me, the small g gods. So what's that mean? You know, sometimes we think, well, I haven't done this. You know, I don't have any idols, some pagan deities in my, in a, in my house, so I'm good. Well, what about our work? Are we working and working, and, and uh, we put the opinion of our boss ahead of God? Or, or we make different excuses that I can't go to Mass because of, of whatever. Now, sometimes we have to, of course, um, there's situations we have to really take care of our family, and we have to work with our boss there, but are we trying to make our best effort to go to Mass on, uh, on Sunday, put God first? Okay, we'll, we'll get to Sabbath day there, but how about our coach? Sometimes we make the coach our God. I think that's a um, big temptation for families today is the idol of kids' sports. That, um, okay, we're going to go travel and do all this travel stuff for volleyball, for soccer, for, for whatever it is, baseball. And if we miss Mass, ah, it doesn't matter. God, God's merciful. He, he understands. I remember that happened once to us, I believe, when I was in eighth grade. I was goalie on the soccer team. I know. I was goalie. I was real tall back then. Okay, so, but... And, and we went on, this, on this, um, this place, and we recognized that we weren't going to be able to get the Mass. And I remember my parents saying, okay, and talking to Coach, says, that, that can't happen again, so we're going to find a Mass in the area, or he's not going to play. Um, habit, a, a big temptation today is politics. We can put politics as our God, that we go to our favorite politician or our favorite party, 
or our favorite um, speaker on TV or podcasts, and we go with their opinion first, and then if it's against God's law or the church's teaching, then we're like, ah, I don't care. I'm, I'm following who I want to follow. That's making a, a God out of politics. Now, we should be involved in politics. We should know certain stuff, but... Okay, so we're getting a point there. So there can be other idols, other gods, a rival God. How about um, uh, to keep holy the Sabbath day? You're doing that right now. This is the best thing to do on our Sabbath, on Lord's Day, is to go to Mass, to worship Him. If we can't make it Sunday, then go, then go Saturday night. Keep holy, rest, a day of rest, but also to go uh, to Mass. I'm just going to go with the ambo now. Okay. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. We did that. And oh, the third one. Don't uh, use the name of the Lord your God in vain. Actually, that was second. Uh, don't use the name of the Lord your God in vain. That becomes so prevalent today in our speaking and podcasts and movies. Don't be like that. Take, take always in prayer or description, but not in vain. Okay, so that's the first three. The first three. Dealing with God. Have now a neighbor, with family, with others. You shall not kill. I hear this from people a lot. They're like, well, I don't need to go to confession because I haven't killed anybody recently. And uh, so or I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't robbed a bank, so I'm good. No, we have to go deeper than that. Remember, Jesus says, if you call your, your, call your brother Raka, which meant like you fool, like you're like, kind of going against him, you're, you're killing him, you're, 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 you're being violent to him in words. Um, if you kill someone's reputation, you know, you didn't have to say that. There was no specific reason to say that, no serious reason. You killed the reputation. That's a form of, of killing of, with our words. Now I'm going to say something a little controversial, but uh, I think we need to hear it. Remember, there's mercy. There's mercy. And, and we're all in different moments in our life and be, can be very difficult. We don't realize what God has taught and through our church. But have we not respected life from conception to a natural death? That's a huge issue in our society today and in the world where we haven't respected the unborn child in the womb. Even at the earliest stages, that's one of the reasons why the church uh, has said that we can't do like IVF because it doesn't respect the embryo, the human being at the earliest stage from conception. We have to respect even from the earliest stage. I know that's a difficult teaching at times. The, the church does give other opportunities we can uh, to try to have children, but, but that is not one of the possibilities. Because the Lord loves us, He teaches, He tells us what we need to hear, not just what we want to hear. And that can be, can be difficult can be difficult. But that's one of the reasons why people are doing things they shouldn't be doing because they've never been taught. If we never say it, still in love, in mercy, but we have to, we have to say it. We have to say it and pray for each other, even when it hurts. Do not commit adultery. Um, another one, people think, well, I haven't done this specifically. But as Jesus said, have we, have we lusted against someone in our heart? How are we doing on our, on our media devices, on our iPad, on our phone, on our, our computer, on our TV? What are we watching? We have to be pure in our imagination, our thoughts, and what we see. You should not steal. Are we stealing from our, from our work? Stealing from our boss? Um not doing the work that we should be doing? Are we uh, lying, stealing, our, even though the government isn't always right, but we are called to pay our taxes? So are we stealing, are we lying on our taxes? We should not bear false witness, should not lie. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why we've lost respect for many of our politicians, because it's so easy, it seems like they've lied so much to just get in, in power. And we can't be like that. Even when we see other people get ahead in work or in life, and when after they lie, but trust in God's plan. Trust in God's plan, not our own. You should not cover your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife or possessions. 
Don't try to grasp other things, other people. Be content with what you have. Those are just some things. And, I, and it's good to make it specific because sometimes we think, well, we're doing fine, but during, especially during Lent, we have to get our souls in shape. That's what I've been focusing on the past few weeks uh, St. Pat's, to get our souls in shape. Are we spiritually flabby in, in our life? I've also mentioned this the past few weeks, that when we take a look at our culture in our United States and in our world, even in our church at times, we can see that there's different divisions and that we're in trouble because we're not keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. We're focusing on different people, different situations, and we're not allowing our conscience to be formed by God's word and by the teachings of the church. We have to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. No matter what comes down the pike in the United States and the world, always keep your eyes focused on Jesus. He's in control. Let's not allow there to be any other rivals to God in our hearts, in our families, in our life, in our country. We put our trust in Jesus, in Jesus alone. Amen? Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you.